Hello everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for today's sermon from Praise Assembly of God here at 89 Congress Street. Hope you enjoy this message and if you have any feedback you'd like to offer feel free to give me a call at 207-364-3856 or my cell phone 207-357-4748. Again, enjoy today's message. Thanks. Praise the Lord. The uh, Chris brother, can you hit light number nine for me, please? We won't need that off now. Praise the Lord. The um, we've been doing a, a New Year's Eve service um, every every year since I've been here, and so that means we would have started uh, 2000 December 31st, 2003, and into 2004. And I always like bringing the word, and I always enjoy uh, joy doing this. And uh, I pray that God's going to speak to your heart uh, here tonight. And we're, I'm only going to speak about 20 minutes because I'd like to do communion a little differently tonight before we partake together uh, of, the, of the elements to reflect upon the Lord's death on the cross. But what I want to talk about tonight is a theme of togetherness. And I got this message tonight from talking to my pastor when I went back home. Uh, this past Sunday on the 27th, and, and then we took off. We left a few days early because of the storm, so we didn't leave Tuesday night. We left Sunday afternoon um, to beat the storm. But we were talking about what a church can do if they are together mm -hmm. and if they're unified and if God can uh, just bless. Because one thing, uh, a pastor that's dealing with a church that's split or a church that's not unified or not together, therefore there are chemistry problems, that pastor can get very frustrated yeah. and get very discouraged and broken. And so just wanted to encourage my pastor and wanted to build him up as well as the other folks there at Full Gospel. And so God laid this message on my heart right in the middle of Pastor Todd preaching. However, I began to praise God because his perspective was to try to bring the brothers and sisters together to, to close out a year and to bring in a new year. And what I want to do here tonight is come from the perspective of maintaining togetherness so that we will continue to be unified in a brand new year of 2016. If you guys would be so kind as to stand with me. For the reading of God's word here tonight. And we're going to look, we're go, I'm going to read one verse, Nehemiah chapter 1, okay? And then what I'd like to do is jump to Nehemiah chapter 8. But I just want to lay a foundation here tonight. Nehemiah, which is uh, back um, after Ezra and back before uh, Job and that section of scripture, Proverbs and Psalms. Nehemiah chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 4 and then jump to Nehemiah chapter 8. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah chapter 8 beginning with verse 1 to verse 6 here tonight. Now, all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the high priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women, and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it the open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday, before the men and women and those who could understand, and the ears of all people were attentive to the book of the law. So Ezra the scribe stood on a platform of wood, which they made for the purpose, and beside him, at his right hand, stood Mathenath, Shema, Ananiah, Uriah, Hilkiah, Mah Mahiah, as, and at his left hand, Hedadiah, Mishael, Mikishah, Hashem, Hashbandana, Zechariah, and Mezulam. And Ezra opened the book in sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. 
And when he opened it, all the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Church, just to let you know, what has happened here is the Babylonian captivity is over, and uh, the Persians have now taken control, and their, uh, <coughs> Nehemiah goes to the king of Persia and says, I'd like to return to my native land. Jerusalem has been devastated, the walls are torn down, and they would be an easy target to the enemy. And Nehemiah was the cupbearer, if you know the story, of the king of Persia. And so the king gave Nehemiah permission to go back to his native land of Israel and to rebuild the temple, to rebuild the, I'm sorry, to rebuild the wall. Okay, and in this case, or in this situation, we have a team that from chapters, Nehemiah chapter 1 to chapter 7, work together to rebuild the wall. And it is completed. And as it is completed, Ezra, the high priest, is going to come in with the Torah, the books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the same books, matter of fact, that's going to be in the Ark of the, or that is in the Ark of the Covenant, okay, the law which Jesus is going to judge uh, unbelievers by as, as according to the law, all right, and so here, as Ezra is reading the law of God, the people are unified together, they are in one accord. And as Ezra is standing on what we would call a podium or in the pulpit, he had people to his left and his right that supported him and that they were unified. Because if you're not unified at the top, you have a problem. I praise God here tonight in the last 40 minutes that God has blessed us and blessed me and Mary for 12 and a half years. And I've always had, you know, a board, a church board that would stand with me from the beginning. I shared it with my pastor, brother, if you don't have a team that's unified at the top, it can't carry down anywhere else. And I stand here tonight and tell you, two wonderful board members here, praise the Lord, you know, tonight. But I tell you what, the seven of us together, unified, as we look to the left and look to the right, they are behind me. You don't know how important that is. I can't imagine how Ezra must have felt as he looked at his right and as he looked to his left and he saw the, that those folks with him were unified, that God's word and the law was the centerpiece of all that he stood for. Church, if we can stay together just in the word of God, we're going to see something far greater in 2016 that we never thought we'd ever see here. Praise the Lord. I mean, we, we're, we, you know, this, this is what God can do is amazing. You know, it's amazing. And, and we as a team, and we have, you know, some big decisions that, that we're going to be making uh, in a lot of different areas, you know. But it's great to know, you know, that we are unified when it comes to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Here tonight, I pray that you guys knew that there would be a sermon here tonight where you could get the Word of God one more time before this Amen. year ends. That's important to me. It's important to us. And I stand here tonight in this pulpit and I think, wow, Lord, you really have been good to me for 12 and a half years when it comes to having board members that were unified in the Word of God. And here, here Ezra is bringing forth the Word, literally the law of God, the first five books of the Bible. But church, as, as I read verse 1, I just want to jump to that really quickly of chapter, I'm sorry, verse 4 of chapter 1. I just wanted to lay a foundation for all of us here. I don't believe one bit that Ezra could have ever got to the point of standing on that podium that was made for him so that everybody could hear the word of God as the wall had been built if Nehemiah had not started first by being a man of God and a man of prayer. I can't stress that enough. No Nehemiah, there's no Ezra. There's no temple. There's no Persian king that's giving his cupbearer permission to return to Jerusalem to build a wall. Church, one person can make a difference. Here tonight, yes, we're collectively one body, the brothers and sisters of Christ, 
but we're also 15 individuals here tonight. We are also individuals that can make a difference. I thought it was interesting tonight during the goal segment where, where Chloe and Penny said, you know what, I want to be a light. Revival can break out at Mount Valley Middle and Morovi Elementary by one person being a light for Jesus. I believe that wholeheartedly. What does Nehemiah say? Verse 4, chapter 1. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. What was he talking about? Well, jump back up. You know, jump back up to verse 3. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is, is also broken down and the gates are burned with fire. Nehemiah, back up in Persia, or what was Babylon, was distressed by what he saw taking place down in Jerusalem. He was broken. Church, are you not distressed by what we saw up here? The top ten things. That distresses me from terrorism to the legalization of, of, uh, of gay marriage. All the things that we talk about, that distresses me. I just came back from my home, which is right outside of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, my hometown. I am distressed by what's going on at my home place as well as what's going on in the nation's capital. So what's the answer? Well, here Nehemiah tells us the answer, and it starts with each one of us. And, 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 as, and so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Notice he didn't just stay in a grief mode. He realized he needed to pick up the pieces and he began to fast and to pray. I ask you and challenge you here tonight. If you want togetherness and unity to reach its full max in 2016, you too must be a person of fasting and prayer, as Nehemiah was. Think about it. We can't get to chapter 8, the completion of the wall, without Nehemiah first starting from his knees right. and by abstaining from food. It's one thing just to say I'm, I'm mourning or I'm upset by what's going on in the world, but what are you going to do about it? The two biggest things that are hard for most Christians to do, of course, is to pray. That's very difficult for Christians to do. But also fasting, abstaining from food. But here, Nehemiah was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Things were pretty bleak in Jerusalem. However, Nehemiah was not going to give up. And Nehemiah's vision and Nehemiah's togetherness that he had with God, it was contagious, guys. Think about that. If, if we become together in, in, in one accord, it's going to be contagious to other people. Think about it. Nehemiah and the Israelites, they built a wall that protected Jerusalem. They, they did something that brought great mourning and distress initially to Nehemiah. But because of his discipline and his resolve and his prayer and fasting, it brought a whole community together. Wow. Church, think about it. Wouldn't that be something if we brought people here together, that some were law, law officers, some were from the professional world, some were for teachers, some were lawyers, as well as middle class, as well as those that are living in uh, poverty. We just brought everybody together and we said, you know what? We're going to work together for the good of Jesus Christ. I believe that can happen here. I really do. But it must come through people who will pray and who will fast. Back to, num back to chapter 8. As we look at this, verse 1, Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square, that was in front of the water gate, which is a big piece of the, of, the, of the wall. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. Notice here who was hungry for the word. It wasn't just Nehemiah, but it was for the people. The people were hungry for the word. I ask you tonight, do you not just want to be together and unified, but are you hungry for the word of God? Wow, where we demand the word. That would be something if we said, you know what, we're not leaving here until we get the Word of God. But what do a lot of Christians say, Pastor, I hope you don't preach too long today. Glad that was a quick one. 
or whatever the case may be. That's, that's the idea that a lot of people, I say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because we make plans for right at noontime. And then you're watching. I can tell people are waiting for me to finish because their heads turn around and look at that clock. Or they, you know, they look at their watch. I can tell right away. You know, they're, they're, they're not into this at all. They're just wanting me to finish up and get off the stage. You know it as well as I do. Here, these folks said, Ezra, we're building you a stage. We're not leaving here until you read the Word of God. Now, think about that. Think about it. If we didn't preach, we just stood up here and had somebody read it. People would be snoring in five minutes. I mean, I mean, that, I mean that's... that's that's the way, this, is, this is how together these guys were. They were unified, and they wanted the Word of God. They were working for a purpose. They were working for the Lord. They were working to bring togetherness and bring forth a great reflection of the unity of God and His Word to the people. And so here they commanded Ezra, they commanded the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra, verse 2, So Ezra the high priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. So what did Ezra do? He got up and did what was asked of him. Everybody that could understand, men and women both, were there to hear the word of God. Togetherness, unity, God just pouring out blessings, but the whole point of this tonight, well, what's the purpose? The purpose of being together is to declare and proclaim the Word of God. If we don't have this, what are we here for? We have nothing without this. Nothing without the Word of God. You know, and it's, it, is, it, is so, uh, it is so important that we understand that. And that's what drove them. That's what drove them. And read Nehemiah 1 to Nehemiah 7 and how the wall was built. And how everybody had a responsibility. And they were the chemistry was amazing. What was driving them? Yes, the Holy Spirit. But more importantly, the goal was driving them. What was the goal? So that there would be a place for God's Word to be proclaimed. Wow. I challenge you on Sunday morning when it gets to sermon time. Look at all the different commotion that will go around. You would think if it was the Word that was driving people, they take care of their business when you know during another time. They want to make sure they didn't miss. That would be like if you go to a ball game or a concert. Oh, here comes the headlining group, and you just excuse yourself. You 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 go during the intermission, or you go when something else is happening. You don't go when the, when the band shows up. You want to be out there for the opening song. You want to see what song they're going to open with. You're, you're going to want to see how loud is it or how quiet is it. You know, you're going to want to hear the new singer, whatever it is. Here, church, what was headlining? What was headlining here was the Word of God. And the people were together. They were unified. They had worked hard. You know, we have worked hard to bring this place, you know, to shine for the Lord. This, this building in September, just three months ago, was dedicated to the Lord. Why? So that we could proclaim His Word. You know, somebody said, Pastor, do we, should we really, you know, we get 200 people here, you know, and should we really preach out on the gospel? You better believe it. That's, what, that's why we're here. Thanksgiving events, that's why we're here to proclaim the good news. That's why we're here to proclaim the Word of God. We're not here just to be here. We're here to be a representative of Jesus Christ and to proclaim His Word. Verse 3, then he read from it. In the, opening, in the open square that was in front of the water gate, from morning until midday, before the men and women and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. So think about this, from morning to midday, at least six hours, the word of God. We think it's something because we're here three hours. Some of us just, you know, hour and a half, so that's all I can handle. Sunday morning, that's all, that's all it is. Here, these guys are together, and they're there six hours bringing in and just listening to the Word of God being read to them. Ezra was a scribe. He wasn't, you know, like Daniel or Isaiah. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't a, a great speaker. He was just simply a scribe, and they were all listening to it. That's togetherness. That's unity. That's the power of the Word. And they, the New King James says they were attentive meaning that what was keeping their attention. That's why I pray tonight, Lord, may your word come alive here in us. 
Praise the Lord. Verse 4, so Ezra the scribe stood on the platform of wood, which they made for the purpose, and beside him. Think about this thing. Here is, why is this here? This is a place to where when you walk in here, you know this isn't a bully pulpit or anything that you know people make fun of. This, this is a place that's symbolic of where God's word is going to be declared. Amen. That's why it's still here. People say, well, most folks are just going to no lectern just down in the... Well, it's a place when you come in here, we want everybody to be able to see the Word of God. Because if I was down there, someone in the back may not be able to see. This isn't about Justin Thacker. This is about the Word of God being proclaimed. Here is Ezra standing on a place that was built for this very reason. Okay? And so it's the same thing with this pulpit. This pulpit is symbolic of God's Word being declared. And that's why I stand behind it, you know, and declare God's Word with, with great pride and dignity that comes from the Word of God. Here is Ezra as he's, as he's declaring the Word, and it was made for that purpose. And beside him, to his right, stood, uh, you know, how many individuals we got? One, two, three, four, five, six individuals. To his left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individuals. 13 individuals, 14 county Ezra, that is up there in, in unity, and God's word is going forth. God's word is, is taking prestige, and these people are all together with it. They're all unified with God's word being declared. Verse 5, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. What does that mean? That means they were sitting down until he started reading. Then they stood up. People ask me all the time, Pastor, why should we stand for the reading of God's Word? Because it's reverent if we're able to. It bothers me when I see people, young people, adults that I know could stand for two minutes but won't. It bothers me. God's looking into their heart. Here, everybody stood up, men and women. They stood. And think about it. Ezra, again, wasn't preaching. He was just reading. They were standing for six hours. People have no problem standing for a ball game. That's right. I've been to them. I know. Concerts. I've been to concerts. No problem standing for hours on end. No problem, you know, getting hurt in those concerts. Moshing around, having a good old time. No problem, you know, standing all day. You know, I... You know, People, well, my mother, when she shops, she'll shop, she'll shop from the early morning, go 12 hours, just shop. My, how do you do it? Well, she does. Not so much now, her health's not good, but growing up, she'd shop every day for 12, 12 hours for three or four straight days, shopping at Christmas time. I grew up watching that. So she'd come back and say, well, how do you play baseball all the time? It's fun. Well, shopping's fun. So ladies, for you, it may not be a sport, but there are things you'll do. You'll put your body through it. Why? Because it brings great joy. Think about the joy of the Lord if we were together. And that meant if we didn't have a comfortable chair to sit in, we'd stand for God's Word. Mm -hmm. And we'd remain standing for God's Word. I mean, that's a challenge, but that's what these folks are doing. They were together, just they were together for the Word. And all the people stood up. And then what did Ezra do? And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Because Ezra knew that all this came, this blessing came from God himself. He knew that these men and women that were working under Nehemiah's leadership to rebuild the, the wall, they were doing it for the glory of God. This was God's hand. May God get all the glory for what happens here at Praise. Amen. Amen. Not an individual. May God get the glory for every single thing that happens here. It's his name on the sign. It's not none of us. It's his name on the sign. All right? And, and here Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen. Amen. Here they're in unity. They're together and they're saying Amen, which means let it be. Amen. Wow. Wow, George, that's amazing stuff. You know, that's, that's amazing. I'd be lucky if everybody stays for a full sermon without at least a few people leaving. Here, these folks are together, and Ezra's hearing them say, after he's blessed the Lord, he's hearing them say, Amen. And not just saying Amen, while lifting up their hands 
And they bowed their heads and they worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They're laying prostrate just as King David did before the Lord. Wow, what togetherness. What unity. They're toge and these folks are tired, guys. They had just been working rebuilding this wall. It's not like they've just been sitting home watching Price is Right Wheel of Fortune. You know, they, and watching football or watching whatever, you know, cooking show, whatever you watch, they had been working hard. But what did they do? They realized what their whole purpose was of being together. Their whole purpose behind being together was to declare the word of God. That's what motivated them. And then once Ezra was finished, and Ezra had blessed the Lord, and the people had said amen, and amen, they lifted up their hands. People say, Pastor, why do we lift our hands up? It's just a way of signifying worship unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's all throughout the Bible, matter of fact. You know, it's, it's, it's just what people do. While lifting up their hands, and they bowed their face, bowed their heads, and worship the Lord with their face to the ground. What reverence here. Together for God's word being declared with reverence. Wow. And we can't even stand for the reading of God's word. And we're able to. I remember a man when I was a deacon in Maryland. And I would love to visit people. His name was Hugh Hall. And he said to me. Because he couldn't stand anymore. His health was bad. And he said to me, he said, just. That's what he called me. And he said, I'd give my right arm to be back in God's house just one more time. Amen, that's right. And I'd give my right leg just to be able to stand one more time out of reverence for God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, forgive me when I whine. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed indeed. And this world is mine. Because when I'd go into the nursing home and, uh, and, and just read God's word, I could tell it was grieving because he could not, a lot of times, could not even sit up because it was the only, he would have to just lay down. It was the most comfortable place, especially the last couple of months. And it would bother him. You could see the tear in his eye because he did not have the strength anymore to stand for God's word. I mean, that, that, that type of, that type of, of upbringing and heritage that this guy had. That's what these guys had. You know, they were standing for the word. The word is blessed. They're working together. And all these folks were on the same page. And it's no wonder God used Nehemiah and the Israelites to do great things. The problem is once this generation was gone, the Israelites fell for the same old mistake they always did, which was idolatry. And next thing you know, they were in captivity again. And, and we're studying that on Sunday mornings. You guys all know that. But at this point was huge. May we be the generation that's together for the glory of God. May we be the generation that will be uh, driven to see God's word proclaimed. And may we be excited for the word. May this be the headliner, the word of God. Not the piece where, okay, I made it through worship, let me just slide out, or let me just keep getting up and going to the bathroom every five minutes and everything else that people do. You know, let, may this be the headlining component, God's word going forth Amen. so that we can proclaim it together and then worship the Lord. Wow. That's amazing stuff. That's why you hear me say often, though, the altar time is, is, is so important because that's the response to God's word. What was the response to Ezra? Amen, amen. And then they lay prostrate before the Lord. Wow. That's amazing to me. They were expecting, as they were together and unified, that God's word would come alive and would produce worship unto thee. May that be what we see here at praise. May that be what we see here May, that, may we see in 2016 a hunger for God's word like never before. And may we be unified from the front row to the back row for the glory of God. Father, thank you for your word here tonight. Lord, I thank you for Nehemiah's life. One man that you raised up who was a couple. Hello. Thanks for watching today's message. Appreciate you taking the time. 
to listen to each word of God as shared here today. I'd also like to take this time to invite you to our weekly services, Sunday school for all ages at 9 a.m., worship at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. with Children's Church at 10 a.m. Also, we have a special men's and women's group at 5 p.m. on Sundays. During the week, we have several services as well. We have an extra innings class with me, Pastor Justin, on Tuesdays at 10. Uh, also, uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., we have a special class on Israel and the Book of Acts. Wednesday, we have a love and respect class for married couples at 10 a.m. Also, on Wednesday night, we have our family night for all ages at 6.30 p.m. And lastly, we have our food pantry on Thursdays with servings at both 10 and 11 a.m. May God richly bless you today. Thanks again for watching.